back to Jerome Beef Farm and Homestead. It's uh, time to do a homestead update vlog. It's uh, June 1st, so we made it through May. May was the month of torrential rains, flooding, and tornadoes. Man, it was crazy. We spent uh, one evening, about a half hour in our tornado shelter. Tornado came across uh, north side of our place here and uh, went on up north. And there was also quite a bit of damage uh, on the north side of Oklahoma City. A lot of flooding around uh, northern part of Oklahoma, up around Tulsa, Stillwater. Uh, we had five inches of rain from three different rains, uh, total five inches, and we had a lot. And uh, we probably got a fourth of what they got uh, everywhere else. So uh, anyway, going to do a quick uh, walk around and uh, show you what's going on in June. So here's our little volunteer garden we had last year, and it's, uh, we just basically got onions right here and a couple, uh, one pepper plant, because we had an extra. Got a couple more peppers, I think we're gonna put them in here. We need to weed it. Uh, this has been kind of neglected because uh, early in the spring, we went to turn the soil over, and it is so full of tree roots from these trees and not big roots but little bitty roots that are just it's just full of them and uh, you can't work the soil you can't turn it it's all wadded up so I think we'll probably wind up abandoning this spot and uh, start another little garden like this somewhere else but uh, we got our big raised beds now so that's not a big deal uh, fruit trees are still hanging hanging in there doing good I think this is a cherry. Don't have any cherries on it yet. I never have had. We've uh, got some little peaches going on here. Looks like these uh, have wormholes in them. They may not make anything, but uh, that's okay. We're mainly interested in getting the tree up and up and going. There's a nice big fruit tree that'll actually produce some. Uh, got our comfrey transplants uh, there on the west sides of the some of the fruit trees going on. <coughs> comfrey is supposed to uh, pull up nitrogen and uh, you put the leaves down in there as a mulch and it uh, helps feed the tree. So these trees were actually uh, standing in water for quite a few days. Looks like it uh, hadn't hurt them though. So uh, this is, uh, I think that was a pear. This is uh, some kind of an apple. Haven't had any apples yet though. Over in the compost area, we haven't turned it yet this year. I need to get the uh, chicken coop cleaned out and dump on all the, uh, the paper, cardboard sacks we got there. Look at these big old sunflowers in here. It, uh, man, they're big. Looks like something's eating on them pretty good. So we need to get uh, get the coop cleaned out from all the winter chicken poo and get that out here. This little peach tree here has got some nice, uh, quite a few peaches on it. So, I don't know if you can see those in there. There's quite a few. That'd be cool if we get a few peaches. The uh, asters are starting to bloom. That's the white flowers. I think that's what they're called. And this was an apricot tree that died out and this came back from roots. So I trimmed off all the little ones and saved the biggest uh, sucker coming up. And uh, so that's what that is. It's kind of flimsy. So we need to stake it up, I guess. Let's uh, check out the garden. Got uh, lots of nice flowers coming up out here. Looks like we probably need to water. 
I don't know what these are called. I call them cargo burrs. <laughs> Got some vines coming up here. These vines will work their way up, up this trellis. If I didn't know any better, I'd say that's poison ivy right there in that corner. Nice. So we've got a few onions out here. These big onions are left from, uh, we planted those a year ago. So when these fall over, I guess, according to Okie Rob, that's when you harvest your onions, when the tops lay over. So got a wild sunflower there. These are all chives. Planted a few peppers right down the middle there. There's a couple radish plants left over I didn't get out of there. And there's the onion starts that we started this year. So over here we've got uh, carrots and sunflowers. This, I can't remember. I'm thinking it is, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I was gonna say broccoli, I don't know. And this is cucumbers. So we'll trellis this up here shortly. This is celery, I believe. And some more cockleburr flowers. Here's our corn rows. Those are looking pretty good actually. Better than last year. Last year we got them planted too late and uh, we didn't have the bed leveled out right and they got too wet in some areas and too dry in others. So we got that all corrected this year. In between the corn is cantaloupe. Man, look at that cockleburr, it's a tall one. That's gonna be pretty. Some more chives. Or, oh, what are these? I can't remember. It's not something I like to eat, so I don't know what it is. Man, the comfrey out there is doing really good. If you can't grow comfrey, you need to give up on gardening. That's my advice to you. You can't kill comfrey. You could probably round up it and it would still grow. I'm just kidding, I have no idea. Uh, here's uh, some peppers. Need to do a little weeding. And looks like we got four squash plants here. And beets. And these are sunflowers. I think someone's having a sunflower challenge again this year. I don't remember who it is. And in the center, those are year old onions. What should I do with those onions, Oki Rob? Let me know. And these are peppers. We actually grew these from seed in our cold frame over here. That's the cold frame. I'll show you that here in a second. And here in the center, we got the green beans. And the maters, maters and marigolds. So uh, these were struggling for a while. They're doing good now, looks like. Looks like we got Bermuda coming up in our straw. <laughs> I can't get Bermuda to grow anywhere out here. And it comes up in here where I don't want it. That's how Bermuda works, I think. So we need to start uh, getting our tomato uh, clips hooked on. So we run these little clip thingies. We'll clip them on to the plant and uh, train it up the, the string. So we might have a decent tomato crop this year. Last year it wasn't so good. 
these big ones we bought uh, at a nursery I think a local Ace Hardware had them and uh, these are ones we grew from seed these are celebrities and I can't remember what these ones we bought are they're usually uh, big boys or something like that is what they usually carry but these ones we grew from seed like that that's celebrity I bought some jet setter seed I guess none of it got planted I'm not in charge of planting anyway that is the garden I'll probably do some drone shots of this throughout the year I did have to send my drone off crashed it one too many times I guess I was getting compass errors on it and last uh, thunderstorm that was coming through I had it up taking shots of the clouds and uh, I had it at 200 feet and I was bringing it down and it was at 75 feet and uh, it locked out it dropped out of GPS mode into aviation mode which means you're flying it and uh, I tried to fly it back and it was the controls did the exact opposite of what I told them for left and right so I had to figure all that all out on the fly and uh, it was actually way over these trees right here and I got it back about right in here and I crash landed it over there by that dirt pile and decided I ain't flying that thing again because it'll be gone so I did buy the DJI refresh insurance so I can get a whole new drone as long as I uh, have one to send them <laughs> if it flies away you're out of luck okay blah 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 here's the uh cold frame so we got some good milkweed going there so uh we leave that for the monarchs i think that's what that is got a few more flyers need transplanted looks like some day lilies and some coxcombs down in there and uh this tall thing here that's actually some clover that we planted to try and get some clover going out here for the honeybees and there's the comfrey and these were some little spindly little tomatoes that i just went ahead and found a place to put them uh, to get them out of the cold frame they may die so i just stuck them here between the comfrey and i bought this one uh, jet star there it is mr cb my jet star tomato i bought it and uh, made this bucket for it and i put uh decaying wood down here about the bottom half filled it up with nice uh dirt that we have the compost dirt that's uh the stuff that we have in the garden there it's the same dirt and uh I mixed just a little bit of triple 13 in with it and right after I transplanted it the tips of the leaves turned yellow and then they just died all the way back so I don't know what what's wrong with it uh, the soil is moist I did put drain holes in the bottom I don't know man I am just a tomato killer so I was all excited about this so what's wrong with it mr. CB tell me tell me what am I doing help me all right that's it for the garden we'll go over and uh, see what's happened with the ladies in the coop I didn't get eggs last night, so we probably got quite a few eggs. And I hope you're not broody.
These Orpingtons are so nice and friendly, it's hard to tell when they're broody. She doesn't puff up. Other chicken breeds will, uh, they get pretty mean when they're broody. I think she's just in there laying, hopefully. We'll come back this evening and see if she's still in here. I thought I had her broke. Down by the pond and swing by the beehives. So we've been working on the boat. I tore all the carpet out of it. The seats were rotten and no good. And uh, sprayed bed liner in it. So the bed liner turned out pretty good. And I'm working on the seats right now. So the seats I got are a little big for the boat. But uh, I think we're going to... They'll work. The uh, white asters are really blooming. So well, here's where we did a little project, uh, filling in these washouts and putting seed down. And then we got about eight inches of rain. <laughs> but uh, luckily I built the washed out part up higher so the water would run either side of it so it wouldn't wash out again. You can see the Bermuda seed starting to come up there. So hopefully we'll still get a little bit of rain and keep that seed watered. There's uh, lots of tadpoles in the pond, or there was. You can hear the frogs chirping in the evening now. Yeah, there's still a few tadpoles in there. Not near as many as there was. Starting to see little frogs jumping in now. So we've got some maple trees coming up. I'm going to uh, get these and transplant them. There's one there, and uh, here's some right here. So those are kind of close together. And there's three or four down in there. There's a couple. So we were trying to figure out where the maple tree was. We finally discovered it's right there. It's uh, on my neighbor's side of the, the property line right there. Oh, we got us a turtle. He must have migrated in here. This old nasty Johnson grass, man, I hate that stuff. I'm gonna get the weed eater down here and clear this up. Not let that get out of hand this year down here. That's my plan anyway. Oh, I see, yeah. I see the mom and daddy frogs hopping in. 
<laughs> so uh, a couple weeks ago this privet tree was in full bloom and man it was covered with uh, butterflies honeybees didn't seem to care for it but man it was covered with butterflies I got some good shots of that for some b-roll We see Maggie. We see. You see a frog? Hmm? You see a frog? Who? Oh. Get him. Get that frog. Get it. <laughs> She's on point. She's a boxer pointer. Look at her. That is true form. I have to send a picture of that to my buddy that raises bird dogs. Tell him my boxer's a better pointer than his whatever they are. So the bees are doing good. That hive, the big one there in front of us, is the huge swarm. It's doing really good. And I suspect that honey super is probably three quarter full. That's, uh, I have not checked it, so that's something I gotta do. And I might get into the beehives this evening when it cools off a little. It's supposed to get up to 90 today. So uh, we have one spare uh, empty hive, this little nuke here on the end. So we are Full up of bees. Uh, I have two hives that I think the queens are phasing out and they're slowing down and they're not going to do anything this year but most of my hives are on the upside getting bigger. So uh, I don't know what I'm going to do next year. Uh, may sound stupid but I guess I hope for a, a hard winter and lose a few of these weak ones and the strong will survive and make uh, better hives with better stronger genetics and uh, we'll split some of those and and try and maintain this level of hives so i have 27 right now 26 if you don't count hayden's we need to get that to him uh i've, I've been running out of beehive parts like bodies and so you can see that double decker nuke there that's because i didn't have enough uh, deep boxes so this uh nice warm dry day after all the rain is uh prime foraging so they are hauling it today so that hive number one right there uh that's that hive is not doing well and hive number five over here is not doing so good the rest of them have uh, fairly fresh queens or this year's splits some of the splits are already like this one right here number 19 right there that one was a split down to a single deep and it's already on its second deep and there's about 30 pounds of honey in that top box so i think we're going to have close to 150 pounds of honey this year that's what how much we had last year on our summer harvest and this year's looking looking stronger but i don't want to say anything and jinx it <laughs> so uh, i don't know if this gopro picks up the bees coming and going but there's just hundreds of them just just going back and forth it's pretty amazing And we need to mow down here. <laughs> There's Buck. Hey, Buck. Buck's been in Colorado for two weeks. Yeah, welcome home, buddy. Maggie's like, who are you? <laughs> oh, yeah. She remembers now. Yeah. 
my neighbor has a cabin up in Colorado. He gets to go up there for two weeks at a time. Life's not fair. <laughs> Thanks, Buck. Things are back to normal for Maggie now. This uh, fescue in here that we planted two years ago is really doing good. I try not to mow it off very low. I keep it high. It makes it more drought tolerant. And uh, this fall, we'll uh, scratch around in here and reseed it and make, get it even thicker. So it does good here in this shady area. So all the irises are done blooming. Mulberries are, are uh, putting on mulberries or dropping them. That's what this is. Chickens like these, it turns their poop purple. <laughs> Kids' playhouse, treehouse. Well, that's it for this little walk around update. Uh, first of June. Man, it seems like it wasn't long ago we were complaining about it's cold and I'm ready for spring, and spring is basically gone now. <laughs> it goes by so fast when you're so busy. And uh, all the rain we've had, we haven't been able to get to do a lot of things but uh we did what we could so uh check out the uh boat refurbishment video and uh fixing those washouts with the tractor exciting stuff i know that uh i think the homesteading uh crew appreciates these videos a little more than the beekeepers the beekeepers are like ah next video <laughs> Anyway, thank you for watching if you made it this far through my babbling. And uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And we got lots of videos out there for you to check out. And we'll catch you on the next one. Y'all take care.